Okay, can you see my screen? Okay. Yes. Cool. Okay. So, um, as in any uh, software, programming software, it needs some code to run. And these codes will give it basically um, the type of content you want to create, right? Uh, so the first thing here, uh, something very, very uh, common uh, in LaTeX, which is the Beamer class. So in LaTeX, you have different document classes. You can have, uh, you can appraise this Beamer by article, uh, by letter, it could be um, a book chapter, but uh, here we're using Beamer, which is a very specific type of uh, document class used for creating presentation uh, documents, presentation slides. And then, of course, the first thing you need to put is start your presentation by the mode presentation. And uh, so here, I guess that's very easy, just two lines. So the Beamer class comes with already, uh, so that's the advantage of the Beamer. It comes with already default slide themes. And these themes could be um, um, this default theme. There are, uh, these people have created these themes and added them to the Beamer um, package. For instance, uh, I'm gonna show you some of these. Uh, so if I want to use one of these themes, I just have to end comment one of these types right and by uh, and if i want to uncomment it i just need to delete this percentage sign and i run the card and that's what i'm going to see so that's the kind of the theme the an Ar arbor uh, theme uh, if i want to try another one for instance the one i use the most is the madrid theme it's pretty nice <coughs> this one very simple, right? Uh, if you want to try another one, I'm gonna share all of this with you. So you don't have to do this at the same time with me on your overview account or anything. So for instance, if I want to check the dressing theme, this is what you get. You see, so not a lot of variation, but still. So you've got a lot of options, right? You've got a lot of options. You can choose which one you want and you pick up. So after choosing your theme, you're going to choose the color theme, right? You can change these colors. And here, for instance, I'm using the beaver color, but you can change that. So if you want to change it, like undo it, you just add the percentage sign. And then I'm gonna do this to see, so that you see better. And then you just choose another one. For instance, maybe I want to choose the albatross. Let's see what that gives us. So the theme remains the same. It's the colors that's gonna change, right? Oh, this is very dark, no. So maybe I choose a dolphin. Let's see what it gives. For instance, this, this is a dolphin, right? It's just white and some purple. I'm going to keep the beaver for now. So these come within the beamer. So you don't need to, you don't need to do anything. These you find them on online. This is the full list that I provided you. So you'll just have to, you can just explore them by yourself later on. Okay. So what we're going to do now is we're going to work on, um, so these are some, by the way, so as any programming language uh, software, you need to have some packages to get some things um, added to your uh, slides. So here I added a graphic uh, package to add uh, figures basically. This is uh, for tables, if to have a uh, multi-column uh, tables, and then this is for mathematical equations. We're not gonna use this today, but just for you to know that there are packages that you need to add um, uh, sometimes depending on your, um, depending on what you want to add in your content. Okay, so the title, I'm going to add my title. So here you can see brackets and then you can see braces. I'm going to start by the braces and um, you're going to see the difference. So if I add my title here, it's going to be in this big title here on the first slide that you're going to see now how to make a LaTeX. 
presentation. There you go, right? But sometimes you see people having a double title. So you have a main title here, but you also have a short title at the bottom. You know, you want you to remind your reader that you always have this short title here. It's optional, you don't have to have it, but I'm gonna just show you different options. So here I wrote Mina's workshop. So that's gonna show up all over the slides, right? So this Mina's workshop here, the short title in brace in brackets, that's gonna show up in all my slides. That's what I wanted because I want it to show up. If you don't want, you don't have to add it. Here the author, and these all come in within my Beamer um, word, uh, document class. My institute, Central European University. Right. Okay. And um, I can add, for instance, um, my email address to the main page. Okay. And here, as you can see, my um, underscore did not show up and that's because you need to add a slash before uh, this sign. And then if I do it again, it's gonna show up. You see? So be very careful because since it's a programming language, it doesn't read uh, symbols and um, uh, um, symbols and um, other uh, equations the same. So you need to add, um, you need to add the, the the code that basically LaTeX understands so that it's, it understands this as an underscore and not something else. For instance, um, if you put the equal sign, that's not gonna show up until you put it between two dollar signs, for instance. And uh, put the date, for instance, the year 6 November 2020. And there you go. If I not, this is my main, basically, uh, slide. And then I want to tell, so in that hack, you always start by begin document and you end your script by end document, always, right? After choosing your theme and main slide, you're going to do that. So you're starting your document and this is where the, your slides will begin, right? Including this main slide we just created now. Uh, and to include that, I just do begin frame, which is a slide. So when I say begin frame, I always do end frame. So as soon as I, for instance, do this, begin and tell attack begin frame, automatically it will add up end frame because you can't just begin something and not end it. That's, that's just the way it works. It's a, the way markup language works. So you don't need to know all these details, just Keep in mind that if you begin a document, you have to end a document. If you begin a table, end a table. So that's how it works. Otherwise, it, you're gonna have um, error, 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 and it won't run. So here I put begin frame, end frame, and in the middle I put title page, which is this, my title page, right? That they just created. Very simple. And then we can get started, right? After I had uh, my uh, first slide, and after, comes, well, after the first slide, generally we have an outline. So here I created again another uh, slide. I started by begin frame, end frame, and then I put frame title, which is the outline, and table of content, right? Because I want to create a table of content. And here you go. It's still empty because I didn't tell it anything. Um, but what we're going to do here is add our sections to the table of content. So to add that, we click on section. And then here I can add, for instance, section literature. I can have a section on hypotheses. I can have a section on methods. My methods I'm using. I can have a section on um, results and section on, for instance, discussion, right? 
And if I tell R to print, uh, if I tell LaTeX to print this for me, here what do we get, right? We get our sections. So that's one way to print your outline. But uh, you might have noticed that in some presentations or in, in conferences where people present longer presentations where they have several sections, they want to remind their audience that now I'm in section two, subsection 2.3, blah, 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 right? So you want to remind your reader in which section. So you want this outline to go, to be repeated throughout uh, your presentation whenever you move from one section to the other. And in order to do that, you need to add a small code. So what we're adding here is at begin section, braces, and then you do your begin frame beamer, what we're using, frame title, which is the outline, of course, and table of content, current section. So if I add this, you don't need to learn it by heart, by the way, I'm gonna share this with you. You can also Google it, you're gonna find it, but I'm sharing this with you later on. So if you just add this at the beginning section, throughout your presentation, your outline gonna be repeated again. What do I mean by this? I'm gonna run it and you're gonna see what I mean by that. So look at this, look what happens now. I'm having the section literature focused on, and then I'm moving, having the hypothesis focused on, and then the methods, results, you see? So that's what that, the little code does. It's up to you if you don't want to have it, you don't add this at begin section part. If you wanna have it, I think it's useful. It's very nice also to remind your audience, especially as I said, if you have a longer presentation, you remind them of where you are and people tend to, tend to be thoughtful sometimes and lose uh, track of the stream of, um, lose track of what you're talking about basically. Okay, is this clear until now? Do we have questions or can I move on? I can't right. hear. Yeah. Yeah. All good? I, I think I had a question. Yeah, and, sure. Uh, just, the, just like, a, do I see it well that with this uh, percentage sign, I don't know the exact English name of it, but this is how you make notes in your presentation? Yes, or, uh, yes. Okay. And Thanks. otherwise, otherwise you begin um, you begin with the, your lines with these uh, brackets. With a slash and yes, when the quote, yes. Okay, okay. But yes, this uh, is. The percentage for the, for, the, for the notes. Yeah, sorry, I was not very maybe um, straightforward with that. So this percentage sign is just for comments. So I keep those comments for you or for myself to remind myself basically what I'm doing with that particular code. For instance, here, I want to have my email address and then you just put um, the percentage sign and then you add it. So you can write whatever. So that won't be read as a code. It, would, it won't be printed on your content here. So whatever I write here, blah, 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 it won't be printed, right? So whatever you write there, it won't be printed just for you, it's comments. Um, okay, thanks for pointing to that. Okay. I have a quick question, sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, but just uh, wondering how these blocks are being constructed because um, I have seen that you were writing something when already when the brackets already ended. So there is a beginning of the bracket and then the end of the bracket. And then in between there, there are some things. And first my idea was that one slide maybe um, consists of, so one slide is kind of between the, the beginning of the bracket and then the end of the bracket, but then Afterwards, when it was already closed and you write some stuff there, it was still included. So um, is there a way how to distinguish different slides from each other or how you mm. can construct this? So the way you have a different slide, I'm gonna give you an example, okay? So if I say I want a slide, which is none of these, right? None of these my sections. I want to have, after literature, I want to have a different slide which is not a literature slide, right? Okay, I want to have maybe before the literature, okay? Let's put it like that. Um, so I want to have a different slide. I do begin and then I put frame. And as soon as I click enter, it gives me end frame automatically and frame title. So it's asking me to title my frame. And this frame is basically your slide. 
So what I'm going to do here, oops, I deleted it. I'm going to write, for instance, main research question. Okay. Uh, please. Let's see what it shows. So here, before my outline, I put it to one slide, you see? I just did begin frame, end frame, and put my, my question. I can name the title, basically, of my slide. But what I, I can also do is link my slides to my sections, which are these, what I just created now. And to do that, you're gonna write right after your section and do the same. Uh, I don't know if this was your question or you are pointing to something else. This is related to that. Yes, absolutely. Okay. Thank you very so, much. Yeah, yeah. You, you can have basically a separate slide. You can create slides within the sections. Uh, but the most important thing is all your slides will begin by begin frame, end frame. You have to end every slide by end frame. Otherwise, it won't, it won't run, basically. So many, what? Hello. I have a yeah. question. Yeah. Sorry, I will put the camera later. Give me a few minutes. Um, do you write begin frame after you begin this section, or it doesn't matter? It depends, you write... you, it depends where you want to have your slide. So, for instance, here my main research question. Maybe I want to have it before I outline my my section literature, and I just add it before. If I want to have it within the section, I do it here. So here, for instance, if I take this and run it here it's gonna come after it but um let's see what it gives it's gonna come right after my uh, literature section so this is literature and it comes separate it's still not um, yeah but if after if, in case you are doing this uh, mm -hmm. you wrote uh, here you wrote section yes. literature then begin frame does it are you telling the uh, latex there that this frame is part of the section literature? No, but that's what I'm gonna show you right now. Ah, so because I was confused we could, between both, yeah. Okay. Yes, so that's what I'm gonna do, show you now. So if I want to tell a tag that this is part of the section literature, I write literature as my main title. Literature, oh my gosh, I don't know how to write it. The type in literature. And after that, I can give it even, um, uh, another um, subsection. Title. So it's called frame, frame subtitle, I think. And there you go, frame subtitle. For instance, I'll call it a subsection on formatting. Just, just examples, okay? So this maybe doesn't make sense. Uh, okay. That's what I'm gonna do, and you'll see. Okay, you see now? Uh-huh. Now, because I begin my frame literature, I wrote here literature as my frame title, it automatically linked it to my section. Okay. Uh, if you don't want to have a, su a subtitle uh, here, so section on formatting, for instance, you don't need to add this frame subtitle. Okay. You can name it, you can add a subtitle to it. You see what I mean? Especially if you have different approaches you want to mention in your literature and you want to have it clear, this is the first stream of thought, this is the second stream of thought, whatever. Except okay. Okay. I'm glad you're asking this. Um, okay. Uh, very useful for formatting too is when you have bullet points that LaTeX takes care of. It's the same distance, the same margin, everything um, symmetric is basically you do this. I will ask start begin and here I will do itemize. It means I'm going to itemize my, my um, content in that slide and I add item. So you see what I did here? So I did begin itemize. Of course I need to end itemize. There you go. And that's what it gives me. There you go. That's what I did. I don't need to repeat, begin, itemize, and itemize throughout the slide. So I can just add item and write what is my next 
bullet point, right? How to use, for instance, the tag. If I add that, it gives me another bullet point, right? I'm going to show you another trick now. So, so always just keep in mind that you always, if you begin something, you have to end it, right? Like here, I begin itemize, I have to end itemize. If I delete this, it's probably not going to run. You see, you get a bunch of errors. So, so just, just, I know it's not the way we think about things, but after a while you get used to it. And, and generally, as soon as you start to begin something, the tag will give it to you directly and the, whatever you started. Uh, here, I want to show you a trick. So basically, what if I don't want to have my two questions showed up at the same time? I want to start talking about what is the tag, talk you, to take you through this definition, and then I want to move on to this. And then by moving on, I, I, I just move to my next slide and it shows my second line, right? I don't want them to show at the same time. And for that, you just add a simple thing here, which is pose. So if I add pose to my slide like this, this is what you get. So I get a slide, so we're in the literature, right? I get a slide, what is the tag? I talk about it, I want to move on, and I move on to this directly the second question. It could be the next line, it could be the next literature, it could be whatever you want to, to show, but I'm just, um, I'm just showing you how you can do that. And etc. etc. you can add pose, if you want to keep that same uh, pattern item, um, when to use this, and then it's going to give you another slide. You see your number of slides are increasing. So you have another slide here, when to use this, etc. So uh, this is very, I think, very useful. I use it often in my slides because I don't want to give all my content at the same time. Um, so that's for that. Okay, we're going to move to something else. So within the Beamer, um, within the Beamer uh, document class, we have um, um, the blocks. So we can add blocks. And to do that, we're going to begin. So we're going to move to hypothesis um, part. In frame. My frames are the hypotheses, for instance. Um, and then I want to go begin block for instance I want to have my um, block on hypothesis And you're going to see what's going to happen. So I move to hypothesis to my second next section, and this is what it gives me the block, right? So that's what you get. You get a, a whole block where you can insert text. It is just a it's just a setup thing within uh, Beamer that you can just use directly. And here I can type I hypothesize that um, blah blah blah. See, it's written within that block because I'm writing within the block. See, I add begin block and here end block and here in the middle I write whatever I want to include in that block. Uh, you can do, there are other features you can use which are, um, uh, for instance, if you want to give, um, what is that? So you can have different types of blocks. You can have begin. You can have an alert block. And this is important tool, for instance. And alert block. And look what I'm gonna have now. So that's my alert block. You can add something like something I want to get it highlighted, right? You can have 
another type of blocks, which is again samples and examples. And here it's the block to give examples and it's in green. So these are built up, you don't need to set up the color or anything. Of course you can change that, but these are already existing within the, the package, so you don't need to worry about them. Is this clear about the block thing? Of course you can write text here, add whatever you want. You can add it in a different block, uh, section, etc. Yeah, et I actually wanted to ask, um, if you mm -hmm. wanted to change, if you wanted to change the color, how would you proceed to, to do that? Uh, for the color, so these are built in, you know. Uh, I don't have the code by heart now, but if you just Google how to change the color of a uh, block, it's gonna you're gonna find the exact code. I, I actually thought. Sorry for interrupting. Yeah, I actually yeah. thought that you. You, the the colors are given with the with the themes you you mm -hmm. use in the beginning, right? Yes. So you basically change the theme if you want to change the colors, but the it's in one package. Yes, exactly. It comes with within the package. Yes, exactly. Yes. So if it's if I say it's alert block, it's gonna give it to me in red because I want to highlight it. If it's an example, it's gonna give it automatically in green. If I'm using this particular one. Uh, but of course you can change that you can have your own blocks with your own colors you just google it you'll find how to do that i don't remember the exact code now uh, but of course you can change that as well i'm going to show you another trick now for section methods so what about if i want to have um if i want to have for let, let's say in methods I'm here in methods. I have two methods, right? I have method one and method two. And I want to have those as subsection. And I can have a subsection, which is cool, right? You don't have just one section. You don't have to write just for sections or like come up with, uh, it exists, you know, you just write subsection and it gives you the exact, here you go. You see, you don't need to do anything. Just write subsection, the title of your subsection and let tag give it to you. Very easy. So that's another um, problem. Okay. I'm gonna show you, um, so of course you can uh, underline text, you can highlight text, you can change the text, of your, the colors of your text, you can make it bold, you can change the font, you can change all that, you can change, I'm going to send you links on all these small formatting. And believe me, you might think that it's a lot of codes and a lot of things to remember, but it's all on Google. You just Google whatever you need, you'll find it. And also by the time of practicing this, you're going to know things by heart, like some of these things, I just don't need to Google them anymore, I just know them. At the same time, you're going to have a template. You're going to have your own template by the time and then that you're going to use that for every presentation you want to make, which is very, I think it's very cool. You don't scratch, start from scratch. Okay. I'm going to show you. Okay. I'm going to show you, I think, something very useful. Let's say I have a result. I have a figure I want to show in the slide. And it's a bit tricky. That's why I wanted to show this. Okay, so I have a, a figure that I want to do uh, show you in my results, let's say. So the first thing you need to have is your figure. You need to upload your figure to your Overleaf work account here, okay? I have already some figures here, but don't pay attention because I used these before. I'm going to upload a figure that I want to add. So I go here, let me show you again. I go to this small arrow here, upload select from your uh, computer or from whatever file you have um, there. I'm going to go select from my computer. I have it already on my desktop. So here I prepared, for instance, the Nina's logo. Okay, I want to upload this. I do open and pay attention to how your file, the figure is named, right? Because you're gonna use that. And as I said, 
in every slide or anything you're going to start in attack it starts with begin and then something so now we're starting starting to insert something and what i'm going to do is begin and what i'm going to do here is add figure right i need a figure so i just told the tag begin figure and oop, it made centering it, it added these automatically to my to my code you see what happened i just wrote begin figure and it added all those to me to my to help me basically carry on the, um, the um, okay so include in your in for include the graphics so here in the braces i'm going to add the quotation marks okay so i did quotation mark i write the name of my figure the way it appears Okay, just the way it's written in um, in saved, and after the brackets, I put a dot, and then the type of the figure, the type of the file I just um, inserted now. And for my sake, case is uh, the JPG photo. And here, before the the braces, I can add brackets. So in the brackets, you generally put information about the dimensions of your figure. And here, for instance, I want to have a width, width of uh, equal to 10 centimeters, for instance, just an example. Caption here is the name of your, um, name of your figure. Minus logo and label figure, my labor. And here I can say, for instance, figure, I want to name it. And let's see. And here you go. I got my figure inserted. So sometimes if it doesn't work, you won't have this figure in the middle. You'll get just a, an empty triangle, uh, an empty rectangle. Uh, it means that either your file um, is not correct, the name of the type of your file, or you mistyped something in the name of the file, or you just forgot to upload it in your library. So that could be also the issue. Um, okay. Sorry, may I have a question? Sure. Uh, uh, is it, uh, uh, should we keep this label uh, line always so we can delete it? Because for instance, I don't want to have these words figure on, on the slide. I just want to have Mena's logo and that's it. Uh, what if we delete this one? We one can try. Here we go. And then I can maybe delete labor. There we go. No, it didn't. Uh, I think here it comes with. Um, uh, okay, I think it comes with. Yeah, there's. So this is another trick with attack. Uh, some of these labels come automatically with the begin figure. So you need to add another code to tell the tag that I don't want to have the figure show up. You see what I mean? This word you just mentioned now. You need to add something. I don't, I don't know it, but I, I remember I had this same issue with tables and you need to add something to tell the tag that I don't want this to, uh, to, to show. I want to delete it automatically or something. You just Google it, you'll find it. Yeah, okay, thank you. You're welcome, but uh, good question, thanks. Okay, so that's how you include figures. So I was thinking to maybe show you tables, but I thought that it's going to be a lot of time showing tables, so I'm not going to do that today. Um, but I want to say a few words about that. So you, when you start doing tables, I know it's going to be a pain in the ass. I know that because I've gone through that and I'm still uh, having issues with tables. But once you get it, it's going to be very nice, very beautiful. Uh, and uh, it's just, tables are a bit tricky because, especially if you do them manually, you're going to set up the columns, you're going to set up the rows, you're going to set up the numbers of columns, the lines, the spaces between your, um, so, so way more details than you would expect, right? I can show you an example, for instance, how tables would look like. Um, for instance, here. You see here, this is a table. That's a table. 
and attack. I I tell my my I tell attack to have my what what are my rows and what are my columns the name of my columns so for instance here I compare model fit factor one factor two factor three factor four factors with the different model fit indices and as you can see here um, chi square degrees of freedom CFI TLI for those who feel familiar with this so and then I just add my numbers that I get in R uh, and by the way another important thing to keep in mind so you can uh, you can print out LaTeX, uh, LaTeX uh, text in R and just copy paste it and add it to your Overleaf script and it will show up. Um, I can show you an example of this if you're interested. And that's one of the advantages actually of using um, LaTeX. It's very, very easy. Okay. Uh, what do I have here? Okay. Sorry for this mess. Okay, I have this might work. So here, I'm using the Stargazer, right? If if you're if you're our user, of course, right? Stargazer it's a package you can uh, install and upload on R, and you can display results of your regressions, results of your factor analysis, results of any models you're you're basically running, of correlations, whatever you're doing. So when I run this code, this is my first regression model. This is my second regression model. I tell I tell it I want the title results and I want the I want them aligned. And this is what it gives me on R. I copy Sorry. paste. Yes, go ahead. Sorry, um, I think I believe um, only just your um, your Chrome or other screens shared. So they are might not be shared because now we only see the the overlay. Oh, you don't see star? No, no. Oh, okay, okay. Let me uh, check this. Oh, thanks for pointing to, to that. Thank you. Can you see now? Yes. Okay, perfect. So this is Stargazer. That's the package I was talking about. If you're using R, of course, I know many of you are using R already. Very useful. There are, there, there are other things. I remember the other one. There's another package, not just Stargazer, but there are plenty of them, I think, in R. Um, so you just run your model. I can have just one or two models. It depends on how many you have, how many you're running. Here I'm going to show you this I just did recently. So this is my regression I run. This is my second regression I run. And I run this code and it gives me this content here. I copy paste this. You see, I start I, until I reach basically begin table, you see. So that's the beginning of my code. I copy paste that and I'm coming back to my overleaf. Here I am. I take a new file. I call it example, for instance, just to show you. Here's my example. Here we go. This is my example. I paste it. Uh, and before I um, run it, there are a few things I need to add. And these are um, na, 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 na. and these are my packages. So I need to tell basically um, I need to tell R that I have I have these packages that I need to insert. There we go. I'm adding those. So these you will have them as a standards every time. This is a document. And at the end I will add and document. And I try to run that. And let's see what it gives. There you go. This is my regression models. You see, I got it from R and it's directly into the tag. And this you can just download it as a PDF, add it to your paper, to your book chapter, to your thesis, and you're set to go. Of course, you can change the, these labels here. This is factors. I can change the left, right. I can write full names of my variables. 
I can change a lot of stuff here once I have this code. So you see the trick here? I avoided writing all this by hand, right? All this, I didn't write it by hand. I just got it from R using the stargazer. So there are a lot of things. That's what I'm trying to say. There are a lot of possibilities and a lot of creativity and a lot of potential in using the tag. Um, that's why I encourage you to use it. Uh, I wanted to end my slide with a thank you for your attention slide, which is very also easy to do. You just begin frame, end frame, and then I put it huge to select that that's the size I want to use and center align it means I want it at the center of my slide. And that's it from me. I'm happy to take your questions now if you have questions and thank you. Uh, and then, yes. so, um, so basically, uh, there's going to be another workshop for this, right? The uh, there will be other workshops for, for other methods and other uh, topics, but I'm not sure about LaTeX. Why? why? Uh, okay, all right. All right. You, you would like to have another LaTeX one? I was just wondering. So basically, I've been using LaTeX for quite a while now. Since okay. I physicist but most much more for scientific papers yes uh, uh, formatting and things like this so i know i was just wondering if uh, there would be any other content about this topic or or not so. um no but i think if there is so so that's the thing we're very flexible at minas like mahmoud is taking uh care of minas and if you if you write to him or even if you write to me um we can maybe organize something. So if there's something you guys would like to really have um, a workshop organized on, we can make that happen. I think the advantage of at least the good point or the good side of this COVID thing is everyone is working online. So it's very easy to invite speakers and people uh, expert on certain topics. So what we can do is basically try to reach out to other students or other professors who are more expert on certain topics and invite them and everyone can attend because it's online and the, the the speaker can make it because it's also online so we're trying to make this happen throughout the year until the end of the academic year but if there is demand for um, more advanced LaTeX workshops definitely we can make that happen you just let us know me and Mehmet and we we just organize that sure yeah, and, and that's for any other topic. It, it could be any other topics, actually. All right. uh, and basically, I wanted to ask about the MENA. So, yes. it's, uh, it, it's, it's, so basically, it's, it's um, an organization part of CEU, right? Yes, yes. But it's open to CEU and non-CEU students as well. Oh, uh -huh, okay. That's good. Yeah. All right. Thank you. You're Thank welcome. You for the presentation. I also have a quick question. Sure. So what you mentioned at the very end with the table that you just inserted that um, included yes. that from R. Unfortunately, I'm not working with R. I'm working with MATLAB. And I wonder, do you perhaps know, is it also possible with this program? Have you ever been working with this one? No, but um, no, actually. But maybe try Google, Google that and see what it gives you. I think, yes, uh, you can. Yeah upload libraries from uh, i mean you can you can use matlab along with latex yeah it's possible uh, yes it's possible i never use matlab so sorry <laughs> uh, i wasn't really aware of this function so that that i'm pretty sure that's gonna help a lot so thanks for that yeah yeah the good thing about latex is like it's accessible from different different softwares and different tools so it's very flexible yeah exactly Thank you very much for your presentation. It was very nice and helpful. I mean, and uh, yeah. I wanted to ask the same question about Stata. Sorry, if it's if Stata. you are aware of. Yes, I think yeah, I think it exists also. Okay, that's great. Thank you very much. You're welcome. How many? One last question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, so the at the beginning, at the very beginning of the document. Um, yes. You need to use the package. Uh, what package do you have to use for presentation? So document class is Beamer is for presentation, right? Yes, it's one type of them. So there are others. 
And you don't, okay. And you don't have to use additional, uh, you don't have, which packages do you use in this case for? For, uh, for this one, because it was very simple, you see. Uh, for instance, I use uh, graphics uh, okay. for the figure, but the math one and the multi-column I did not use, for instance, because I didn't do table and I didn't do math equations, you see. Uh, so every time you add something to um, your content, you're going to add use packages that you need to add here. You see what I mean? Okay. Yeah, it yeah, will yeah. come with a time. So it will come with a time and, and, one, and one time you're trying to insert something and it will tell you error and you'll try to figure it out. And this is when you realize you have a package missing. <laughs> okay. Uh, but I'm going to share with you, uh, let me do that before I forget. I'm going to share with you this basically script. Feel free to yeah. edit, feel free to basically just use it on your Overleaf accounts. Uh, mm -hmm. Add to it, don't stick to only these. You can do way more than what I showed you. So I, I just, I, as I said, mm -hmm. I showed you the basics. You can do way more than what I, I have showed you now. You can be very creative um, and you can um, add a lot of stuff to it. So I would, what I would recommend is you keep this, you add to it, and you save it as your template that you're gonna every time you're gonna use it when you're whenever you yeah that's what i want to yeah that's yeah that's what i wanted to ask if you can share that yes i'm gonna do that now before i, I forget so i'm gonna come back here and share i'm gonna share a link with you and tell me if it works it's gonna be in the chat here let me know if that works So, can you access it? Oh, by the way, uh, sorry, I forgot to mention this. So, you can access this once you have an Overleaf account. So, maybe that's why it doesn't work. So, any of you have an Overleaf account already? Yes. Okay, can you check if it works? Mm -hmm. But uh, where did you share the... In the chat? Uh, wait, oh, okay. Um, I should send it public. Here you go. In the chat of Zoom. Yeah, it's working. It's cool. working. Uh, wait, I'm getting some errors. Ah. <laughs> ah, yeah, I see. What I can also, sure. yeah. I think it's. It's working. It does. It's the Amelie work uh, folder, what you have to click on, or uh, this is where I found your, uh, your code for today. There is, a, there is a folder like a bit below, just like scroll down a bit. Mm -hmm. The error message is what Latte gives you is not really well uh, sophisticated or straightforward, right? So if something is not running, then the whole um, um, presentation is not running, right? Yes. Does it give you any suggestions where to look for the for the mistake? It tells you generally which line is your, your error. Okay. Is. Okay. Okay. Good. 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 Thank but you. what can what I can do is I can copy paste just the so called script. Okay. Just in case some of you don't get that link. And everything is working fine for me. So. Yeah. Okay. I, I can I can do this because I, I assume that some of you never worked with Overleaf before, so. Uh, it's very easy. I can just copy paste it. So, so it's the script we did today. Okay. So what I wrote for you today, just now, I'm going to just save it in a document and uh, share the document with you. And then you just copy paste it after and use that. Okay. Can I ask something? Sure, absolutely. Hi, yeah, fantastic presentation. Thank you so much. Uh, is the recording going to be available somewhere? Um, there might be, copy? yes. So, so this is the first recording we're doing. So we're going to test it after, see if everything goes well, if the screen sharing was normally, it's, um, it's a recording for uh, screen sharing. So whenever I'm sharing my screen. So yeah, probably you're going to get that. Um, 
after, but I, I don't promise, but uh, we're going to do our best to include a good quality video. Thank you. So I'm trying to share this file with you. Sorry. Okay, it's called the tag dropped. Uh, so it's basically the code that was running. You can just, if you don't have overleaf yet, you can just save that. And I encourage you to try it out. I know it takes time at the beginning, but it's only at the beginning. And then you're really good to go. Uh, it's gonna be very easy, very smooth. Um, there's always a start to everything, right? Uh, and people will try to discourage you to waste time on that. Uh, but I do encourage you to waste a bit of time on that and then uh, maybe if you don't feel comfortable with it, don't carry on working on it. It's of course your choice. But if you think that you're learning, you're learning it by the time and um, make improving doing it, just, yeah, I, I would recommend you keep working on it because you're going to meet a lot of people working on it. You're going to, uh, as a researcher, you're going to have people sending you LaTeX documents in the future that you're going to have to open and work with. So why not? I hope this was helpful. I'm very happy to have uh, questions if you have any more questions. Um, that was it. Super helpful. Thank you. Thank you very much, Amani. I'm glad. Great, great uh, basic steps for us. <laughs> yeah, fantastic. That was fantastic. Yeah. I'm glad it was helpful, guys. I tried to make it as simple as possible. Great introduction, yeah. Okay. Then, Mahmoud, do you want to say something? Or uh, thank are you. we done for today? Yeah, thank you very much for uh, doing the presentation. I think, it was a pleasure. Yeah, I think we are done for today. I also left our email to the chat. If you want to reach us out, you can also send directly to my personal email. You will find it from the CU. Uh, system easily yes and I'm also sharing with you one last link uh, it's called LaTeX in 30 minutes it has uh, also other very basic stuff uh, it's it's just a matter of playing around with it you know just having them and playing around how what works what doesn't work until you figure it out and I'm sure you will figure it out and I'm looking forward actually to see you some of you presenting using LaTeX so <laughs> all right thank you Mahmoud thank you. and uh, thank you everyone thank you for your questions um, I hope to see you soon sometime thank you Amini you too have a good evening okay, take care bye bye guys thank you very much bye bye have a lovely weekend guys Cheers. thank you